Tonight, the president and first lady test positive with coronavirus. Uh, he, uh, he continues to be not only in good spirits, but very energetic. Experiencing mild symptoms from the deadly virus days after the first presidential debate. And he shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. The diagnosis sending ripples through the White House, Capitol Hill, and the campaign trail. And the news is dominated with events in the United States. The world is watching. Well, obviously, I think we all want to send our best wishes to the president and uh, the first lady. And uh, I've done that this morning. Reaction from state leaders flood in. All this and more tonight on Fake Nation. The president and first lady in quarantine at the White House. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jenna Browder. And I'm John Jessup. Good evening. Well, the White House tonight in message control mode after the first couple tested positive for the coronavirus, saying today they're experiencing, quote, mild symptoms. Uh, Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany adding that their spirits remain high and that the president is still hard at work. The news came after Hope Hicks, one of the president's closest senior aides, tested positive for the virus. For more on all of this, let's bring in CBN White House correspondent Ben Kennedy. Ben? Jenna, John, right now President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump are in isolation at the White House. And as you guys were talking about, Chief of Staff Mark Meadows says President Trump is up and about and even working despite having mild symptoms. The White House doctor issuing a statement saying the president and first lady are both well at this time after contracting the coronavirus, adding he'll carry out his duties without disruption in plans to remain at home within the White House. He's had mild symptoms, but he is hard at work. Both the president and first lady tweeting, we will get through this together. Uh, they remain in good spirits. Uh, uh, the president does have mild symptoms. The doctors continue to uh, monitor both his health and the health of the First Lady. Late Thursday, he announced plans to quarantine after Hope Hicks tested positive. She traveled with him several times this week, including to Ohio Tuesday for the first presidential debate. Trump phoned into Fox News to talk about Hicks before he got his own results. I spent a lot of time with Hope, and so does the First Lady. And she's tremendous. I was a little surprised, but she's, she's a very warm person. She has a hard time... When soldiers and law enforcement come up, comes up to her, you know, she wants to treat them great, not say, stay away, I can't get near you. It's a, it's a very, very tough disease. The president joins other world leaders, like Britain's Boris Johnson and Brazil's Jair Bolsonaro, who have also tested positive. He kept a midday phone call on COVID-19 support to vulnerable seniors, but has canceled all in-person rallies and appearances in Florida this week. It's unclear how his health will affect the next debate set for October 15th. Democratic challenger Joe Biden tweeted, Jill and I send our thoughts and prayers to President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump for a swift recovery. Now, Biden and his wife did test negative for the virus. If President Trump is sick or incapacitated, he does have the ability under the 25th Amendment to transfer temporary powers to Vice President Mike Pence. Pence did test negative today. John, Jenna. And that is good news. All right. Thank you, CBN's Ben Kennedy. Here with us now for more on what it means now that the president is also a COVID patient is CBN News medical reporter Lori Johnson. Lori, the White House says the president and first lady are experiencing, quote, mild symptoms. For the layperson, what does that mean? It means they don't really feel that bad. We're talking about symptoms like fever, fatigue, cough. Uh, congestion, things like a cold. So the president and the first lady are being closely monitored. What we don't want to see are those mild symptoms progress into more serious symptoms, particularly shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, clutching the chest, tightness of the chest. Their oxygen levels are going to be closely monitored and they're going to be on the lookout for their oxygen levels to, to see if they're decreasing. And if that happens, they are going to need to be put on oxygen therapy, which is often very common for people in the early stages of COVID-19. Hey, Lori, the president is, of course, at 74. He's overweight and has been treated for high cholesterol. Does this put him in that high-risk category? 
It absolutely does. People who are age 74 are 5% more, they have a five times more likely chance of being admitted to the hospital, a 9% chance of dying, higher chance of dying than people who are, say, middle-aged. And then uh, the obesity situation is very serious. We know that the president weighs 244 pounds. He's six foot three. Uh, that gives him a BMI, a body mass index of over 30, which puts him in the obesity category. And doctors say out of all the things that are predictors of whether a person uh, will be hospitalized, it's obesity, because obesity in and of itself is an inflammatory condition. COVID-19, also an inflammatory condition. You put those two con two together and you have very serious inflammation. And we know that with so many of these patients, uh, the, uh, the immune system just starts to go crazy. We call it a cytokine storm when the immune system can't handle all that inflammation. And that cytokine storm is what ends up being deadly, not even the virus itself. So the inflammation is a very serious issue accompanied with his age and the obesity. But having said that 94% of people who are age 74 who are also obese survive COVID-19. Uh, Lori, what kind of treatments do you suspect the president and first lady are receiving in the White House? We know months ago, President Trump acknowledged that he was using hydroxychloroquine as a preventive. That's right. And the president said if he ever got COVID-19, he would use hydroxychloroquine again. Uh, so we can only assume that that's happening. Uh, we know that zinc has been shown to uh, mitigate the virus from replicating. So we, we're, we can assume that he's getting zinc. Of course, vitamin D levels, uh, th that's important, and vitamin C. But beyond that, we wonder if he's been given remdesivir. Remdesivir is fantastic. It's one of the few drugs the FDA has actually approved for COVID-19. It's an antiviral. It's best given in the early stages of the disease because it actually tamps down the virus's ability to replicate within the body. And we know that that's, uh, he, he may be given a five or a 10 day course of that. It's an IV infusion and uh, the NIH has shown that it's been very effective in shortening the course of the virus and reducing inflammation. Uh, Lori, what could this mean for people who have come into contact with the president or the first lady? Could they also easily contract the virus? Absolutely. And you think, Jenna, about how many people have been in contact with the president. And so uh, these people all need to be tested. We know that uh, when you are infected with the coronavirus, a lot of times it's five days before you start having symptoms or even test positive, And that can go up to 14 days. So people who have been in contact with him for the last two weeks, need to be monitored very closely and possibly even quarantined. All right, CBN's Lori Johnson. Thank you so much, Lori. Well, as Lori and Jenna were just talking about, whether it's at the White House or on the campaign trail, the president has come into contact with a number of people. That's right. Senior Washington correspondent Tara Mergener is here with the latest on some COVID-19 test results and how the president's diagnosis could change the calculus for a stimulus bill in Congress. Tara? The vice president, the White House advisors, including Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner, and several Republican members of Congress have all crossed paths with the president in recent days. Ivanka and Jared tested negative for COVID-19. They traveled with the president on board Air Force One for his first He's debate totally against Joe Biden in Cleveland. Fauci the, the president's Indian youngest son, Barron, also testing negative, as did the president's chief of staff, Mark Meadows. Joe Biden and his wife, Jill, have both tested negative for coronavirus. Their physician making that announcement less than 12 hours after President Trump revealed his diagnosis. The Biden sending best wishes to the first family for swift recovery. Judge Amy Coney Barrett, President Trump's Supreme Court pick, tested negative. The White House says she was last with the president on Saturday and that she's been adhering to COVID-19 guidelines set by the CDC. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Lindsey Graham says her nomination is still on track. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says President Trump's coronavirus diagnosis could change the shape of the next stimulus deal. Pelosi says Democrats and the GOP don't have shared values about how to contain the virus and what to put in legislation.
Despite the impasse, airline shares surged after Pelosi took a significant step, saying the House could pass a standalone bill to send airlines money to help cover payroll. She says the chamber could also send funds to prevent tens of thousands of looming furloughs. Airlines have asked for $25 billion to cover employee pay as the travel industry suffers. Meanwhile, in the last snapshot of the jobs market ahead of the presidential election, the U.S. employment rate fell to 7.9 percent in September. It has fallen sharply since hitting a historic record of 14.7 percent in April after the coronavirus pandemic disrupted the economy. Meanwhile, the Trump campaign is already canceling rallies. The CDC recommends anyone who comes into close contact with someone who's tested positive for COVID-19 quarantine for 14 days. All right, thank you, Tara. And coming up, our Faith Nation political panel on the political implications of the president's COVID-19 diagnosis. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all-new CBN Southern Gospel, now available at CBNRadio.com. Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way. I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation. Prophecy thousands of years old. We were called to be a light to the world. Being fulfilled today. Discover how. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary to life. Just call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. To treat a human no matter what he is, which religious he have, which color he is, this is what I'm doing. See how the people of Israel are fulfilling prophecy. History is being written and I want to be a part of it. By sharing their knowledge. In Africa, in Asia, in South America, in East Europe. And their love. This is how we work. This is us. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. Welcome back. Some have expressed concern that the president's COVID diagnosis could jeopardize the appointment of Supreme Court nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett. As CBN News Chief Political Analyst David Brody spoke to Senator Ted Cruz on that point. Here is what he had to say about her nomination. Well, how did you hear the big news, first of all, obviously, with President Trump and COVID-19? How did you hear and what's your reaction to it, sir? You know, I, I heard when everyone else did, when, when the news broke, I, I saw it on my cell phone. Uh, it's, it's obviously concerning. Heidi and, Heidi and I, our, our prayers are with the president, with the first lady, uh, that, that they, they recover. Um, I, I guess the news has reported the president has mild symptoms. I hope that he recovers quickly. We need him strong and, 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 strong and ready, and, and I hope that, that uh, he gets better quickly. Uh, to talk about the Supreme Court nomination situation, do, do you see this potentially being affected at all? Because, you know, with contact tracing and the fact that Amy Coney Barrett was with the president, then with some senators, yourself included, I mean, how is this going to work exactly? Do you see complications at all as it relates to the Senate Judiciary hearing coming up? You know, I, I don't believe there will be. Um, the Judiciary Committee has the capacity, and we've been doing this for some time now, uh, to do either in-person hearings, remote hearings, or some hybrid of the two. Uh, we do hearings every week where, where some senators are participating uh, via remote conversation and some are in person uh, with Judge Barrett. So I, I met with her this week, uh, and, and actually when, when, when all the senators met with her, we met in a very socially distanced, safe environment. Uh, that they, they did it in a, in a very different circumstance than, than is, is typical, 
Usually with a Supreme Court nominee, that nominee will come to each senator's office. And so in the course of a week or two, they'll come to all 100 senators, typically. Uh, mm -hmm. This time, many Democrats are refusing even to talk to her. But uh, rather than having her come to each senator's office, what we did instead is she went to the Capitol, uh, went to a room called the Mansfield Room, where, uh, where the majority typically has lunch. And we met there in a, in a socially distanced way where the chairs were about eight feet apart. And here with us now for our Faith Nation political panel, David Brody, our CBN chief political analyst, and Julia Manchester, political port reporter with The Hill. Both of you, good to have you this Friday. Uh, David, let's start with your Senator Cruz interview. First, great interview. Uh, we heard from the senator. What, what do you think? Could this COVID-19 diagnosis hurt or help the president, politically speaking? I mean, Jenna, if I had to give an honest answer, which I guess I always have to give an honest answer, uh, the answer is, I don't know. And I don't think anybody knows at this point. I mean, it, this could totally backfire on the president. I mean, the conventional thinking here is that you didn't wear a mask, you were kind of flaunting it, uh, you were saying, you know, come to rallies, who cares about masks? If you want to wear one, fine. If you don't, you don't. Uh, and he's got COVID. And so could this come back and, and haunt him politically? Uh, it very well may. You can also argue the flip side of it to say, you know what, the president has COVID. He might, we assume he'll pull through it and uh, there'll be a patriotic kind of surge to look, the president had it and he fought it off and there might be a bit of sympathy. I know, can you believe it? Sympathy for the president. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there could be part of that as well. I just don't, I think it's too early to tell right now. Julia, does the president's diagnosis mean an end to in-person campaign rallies, at least for the time being? I would say for the immediate time being, yes. And to piggyback off of what David just said, we really don't know enough to make predictions right now. And I think what's so interesting and scary about this virus is that it hits everyone differently. We do know that President Trump is in a high risk category, being medically obese and the fact that he is 74 years old, but it still hits people differently. You know, I would bring the example of Boris Johnson, the British prime minister being diagnosed in, um, March, when he was first diagnosed, he had mild symptoms and he was able to work from home in self-isolation, but he very quickly took a turn for the worse ended up in the intensive care unit and, um, you know, credits those doctors and, you know, in the National Health Service in the UK with saving his life. So he has an entirely new perspective on the virus. Now, I'm not saying that for sure is going to happen to President Trump. I'm just saying that we can't make predictions, you know, outside of the near future right now because we just don't know how he and the First Lady and even Chairwoman Ronna Romney McDaniel of the um, RNC, how they're going to be, their bodies are going to react to this and, you know, how mm -hmm. they will recover. Yeah. Uh, Julia, what about the debate? You know, we had our first one this Tuesday. The next one's set for October 15th. Do you think it'll even happen at this point? Well, that's a very good question. I think if President Trump has to quarantine for what, roughly two weeks, I think he'll just be uh, getting over that quarantine at that time. So that might, might be cutting it a little close. And we know the Biden campaign has been extremely cautious about these things. So I don't know if it's going to happen, you know, depending on what the Biden campaign wants and what the Trump campaign wants. I will also note that the debate will feature voters. It'll be a town hall style debate. So I would assume more people would be involved um, on that count. So that's something to consider. However, we do know that the vice presidential debate is happening next week. And we know that Vice President Pence and Senator Kamala Harris have both tested negative for the virus. Speaking of the vice president, David, what happens if the president's symptoms and if his symptoms worsen? Is Vice President Pence preparing for that possibility as well as the government's line of succession apparatus? Uh, sure. I mean, you have to. Uh, you know, I know we heard from Ted Cruz earlier in that interview that I did with him that he kind of started to smirk and say, please, but we're not at the 25th Amendment stage yet. And there are a lot of conservatives that are saying, give me a break. You know, the, the Democrats have been <laughs> the Democrats have been wanting to do the 25th Amendment for a very long time in some form or shape or fashion. Uh, but, you know, we don't know how bad his symptoms are going to get, the president's symptoms. But, yeah, sure. I mean, there's always that contingency plan uh, to, to be had. And, and indeed, that's exactly uh, what would happen. That's what the amendment is there for. But I think we're a long way from there. 
All right, David Brody and Julia Manchester, we will leave it there this Friday. It's good to have both of you. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. The world is watching. When we come back, how global leaders are responding to the president's COVID-19 diagnosis. That story, next. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Takun Olam. This is our nature as a country. To make the world a better place. Literally, we felt the earth shaking. The Christian Broadcasting Network presents To Life. How Israeli volunteers are changing the world. This film needs to be seen by everyone. I was in tears. Now you can own the inspiring documentary to life on DVD. There is blood on our hands if we know and we walk away. I'm so grateful that this film was made. To life can be yours for a gift of $10 or more. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. We know that every minute counts to save life. It'll uh, bless Israel, but it'll also bless all the friends of Israel. Discover the untold story of how Israeli volunteers are making the world a better place. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com to get your copy today. Welcome back. Continuing now with today's major story regarding the positive COVID test of the president and first lady. Reaction continuing to pour in from all around the world. Along with it comes a heightened national security threat. CBN News national security correspondent Eric Phillips is with us now for that. Eric? Jenna and John, more on that threat in just a moment. But first, any time a world leader gets news like this, it's going to get attention, right? But perhaps even more so when it involves a president who has been divisive on issues like mask wearing and social distancing. Donald Trump announces he and the U.S. First Lady have tested positive for coronavirus. Word of the Trump diagnosis dominated news broadcasts around the globe. Donald Trump and seine Frau Melania haben And leaders began sending their well wishes, including British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who himself recovered from COVID not long ago. Well, obviously, I think we all want to send our best wishes to the president and uh, the first lady, and uh, I've done that this morning, as you can imagine. Al presidente de Estado... The same sentiments expressed by a flurry of other world leaders, including Mexican President López Obrador, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Dem Amerikanischen Präsidenten Donald Trump, and Russian President Vladimir Putin, who sent this telegram. But not all reactions were as gracious, at least from people on the street. I kind of feel that he kind of deserved it because he never wore a mask. Citizens in other countries had strong opinions. A person like Trump and his wife, of course, they will get the best treatment. I'm worried about the most uh, uh, ordinary citizen of this world who is unable to get the treatment. I wish for President Trump and his uh, first lady, Melania, quick recover. We need them. They lead the Western world. All of us have to be careful. No one is immune. Simple. If COVID can be contacted by United States president, anyone can contact it. Some administration officials fear China and other powers know the U.S. is distracted by all this and could use it as a window for aggression. National security expert Brad Bowman. I think it's possible that um, an adversary might come to the conclusion that there's a window of opportunity here. Um, I think that would be a mistake on their part uh, uh, because the, as the U.S. military is as ready today as we were yesterday or the week before. 
But Bowman says there is another pressing issue right now that, in his estimation, is a national security risk, and that is the climate of division that is so prevalent right now. John and Jenna. Prevalent indeed. All right, Eric Phillips, thank you. Still ahead, prayer for our president and the first lady as they battle COVID-19. You're watching CBN's Faith Nation. It's the new Superbook Bible app. It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. From Washington, D.C., uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, Escalating fight. Jenna Browder, Goes his words carefully. Ben Kennedy, Plan to join him. And Amber Strong. For impeachment grows a little bit louder. Bringing you the political news that matters. We get out and tell the story of the progress that we're making in this country. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6 on the CBN News Channel. We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. As the nations rage, you can stand with Israel. History is being written, and I want to be a part of it. Call 1-800-700-7000 and get to life. This is our nature as a country. Discover the untold story of how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary to life. To treat a human, no matter what he is, which religious he has, have, which color he is. This is what I'm doing. Support Israel in their time of need. Get to life. Now available on DVD. Call 1 800 700 7000 or log on to CBN.com. And I wish that other people throughout the world could see this side of Israel. Young people, millennials, are flocking to church. It's not an exaggeration to say that we love to meet them and that we love to know their stories. And finally tonight, the chaplain of the United States House of Representatives, Father Patrick Conroy, opened this morning's session with a prayer highlighting the widespread effects of the coronavirus now that's reached the highest office in the land. All along we have been aware of the danger of infection and have been beseeching your protection and healing. Hear us again now as we place our trust in you. Comfort and send your spirit of healing to those who suffer from illness and those who mourn those who have died. Bless those who care for the sick and inspire those who seek treatments and a cure. Lord, have mercy on us. May all that is done be for your greater honor and glory. Amen. Yeah, it's nice to see. And um, as we head into the weekend, we thought that would be a good note to leave you on. So thank you for joining us. And everybody have a great weekend. Yes, have a safe and healthy weekend.